everyone? This is Elisa from Photobox Designs, and I'm here today. I'm going to show you a tutorial on how you can import your images to basically almost any of our snow globe uh, backdrops, our snow globe Photoshop templates. So I'm going to do the example on this one, this Merry Christmas template, which is a very simple template. It has a nice backdrop. It has Merry Christmas written on here. You can click the Merry Christmas on and off, but you cannot change the text. So if you want to write your own text, you just click off the Merry Christmas and you just go to the text layer and you can um, add your own. Okay. So make sure that it is written in a font color that shows up on the template. And it's as simple as that, as changing the text. Um, but let me show you the, um, the other templates that, and there may be more after this video has been created, but they're all going to be pretty similar. So it's going to be this template, this template, this template, this template, this template, this template, uh, and this template so far. There could be more, like I said, but the essentially the uh, the idea will be the same for any of the templates. So um, I'm going to start off, and you can purchase any of these templates at Photobox Designs, www.photoboxdesigns.com. So start off by showing you, <clears throat> do most of these do have instruction layers, not always, but sometimes they do. Um, so this is a, an instruction layer that you will need to click off after you've read it. Um, like I said, you can click this on and off. I, I put this here, it says place your image here. There's really nothing there. It's just showing you to put your image above the background layer, which is this. Otherwise there's nothing there, okay? And we have some nice snow. The snow layer is basically the snow that goes inside. So I'm going to click here just because it's a placeholder. Really doesn't matter. You're going to import an image in, and you always have the opportunity to move your image any way you like. I'm going to shut the snow off for a moment. I'm going to go to File, Place Embedded. This is the way I do it. There's other ways of bringing pictures into Photoshop. This is the easiest way for me. Place Embedded. I'm going to go to the file that has the pictures that I want. I'm going to find the photo. I'm going to take this photo right here, press Place, and she's in. Okay, I press the click check mark, but I need to cut the background out. So the way I cut the background out is I'm going to go here to the quick selection tool. Now you could take the quick selection tool and you could select her. It does a pretty good job, but it's going to bring all, you know, sometimes it does a really good job. Press command D to unselect. I'm going to do something a little more simple. This works most of the time. I'm going to Click select subject. I'm not sampling all layers because I only want to select subject on this layer, but I'm going to click enhance edge. Press select subject. You see it does an even better job. Uh, it did select a little bit of this. Um, actually, I'm going to want a little more of the, uh, the, the plate holder here, but I'm going to want mm, to take away the roses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click down here. I'm going to put a mask over it. Now you can see I have a black mask covering most of it. I'm going to go click B for brush and I'm going to make sure my brush is black. You can see by the color picker. And I'm going to just um, actually want to make sure that my brush is a soft brush. I want a very hard brush. I'm going to go to a soft round brush and I'm going to just, you know, brush this off. A lot of it is really not going to matter that much. I'm going to click X to change the color of my brush to white just to bring back a little bit more of this image. Actually, I'm just gonna press X. I'm going to, it really doesn't matter for this image. I'm gonna delete out this. Uh, this was the bottom of the um, cake holder, but for this particular image, I don't think anyone really noticed that there was supposed to be a cake holder there. It looks like she just has a plate on her lap and I'm gonna go with that. So I'm going to uh, say, okay, this looks pretty good because it's going inside. Press okay. I'm going to press command T to move, create my transformation tool. I'm going to take my transformation tool. I'm going to make sure that it stays in the same aspect ratio. I'm using Photoshop CC 2021. So if you press command T and you're in the transformation tool, you press 
click the edges, it'll keep it the same ratio. I think if you're using an older version of Photoshop, you might have to hold down the shift button because like in the new version, if you hold the shift button, it changes the aspect ratio. See how it changes or it makes her wonky, but you don't need to do that in the new version, but in the old version, you need to hold shift down to keep the aspect ratio. So anyway, just going to uh, bring her into my template, make sure she's sized where I want her. And she looks pretty cute. I wanna make sure that she's really in there correctly. Uh, so she looks really cute in there. I'm gonna go a little bit bigger. Okay, and uh, I like it, but I wanna give her a shadow. So what I'm gonna do is, there's a couple of different ways you can make a shadow. I'm gonna show you one way. I'm going to go onto the layer. I'm gonna change this to infinity, okay? And I'm going to right click on the layer to open up the blending options. Click blending options, I'm gonna to go to drop shadow. So you see it gave me a drop shadow, which is great. All right, and you can mess around, you can go make sure, click into, make sure you're in the drop shadow options. I highlighted that. I can play with the opacity of the drop shadow. I can play with the distance of the drop shadow. You can play with a lot of different things, the spread of the drop shadow, the size of it, all right? Play with it till you like it. Now I like it, but there's it's just it's a little off. It's not really exactly right because it's still picking up like a shadow from this part. I must not wipe that off enough. The shadow around here that I don't love. I just really want the shadow to be like under her feet. So I'm going to press OK. And I'm gonna show you something pretty cool that you can do to adjust that shadow that we just made. So I'm going to hover over the word effects because your drop shadow is now in a separate little layer here called drop shadow. If you clicked it off, it would turn it off, but you can't, I want to edit this. So I'm going to hover, see how it's hovered and says layer effects all. I'm going to uh, hover over drop shadow. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to click create layer. I'm gonna press okay. And now you see how the baby's drop shadow is in its own layer. If I clicked it off, it's gone, on. And now I could take this baby drop shadow, put a mask on it. I'm going to use my B, click B for brush, and I'm gonna wipe off the parts of the shadow that I don't want. Remember, you can use your, your brush at its specific opacities. Right now I'm at 100% opacity, but I'm gonna wanna bring it down to maybe like 50% opacity. And I'm gonna wipe off a little more of the shadow. I don't really think I want the shadow up here. It looks a little funky because it wouldn't really be a shadow in the in there as much. So I really just want the shadow where I think it looks, you know, normal or okay. I don't know. So, um, and this is really personal preference and you don't have to get too crazy with it because you know, it's inside of this globe. So people aren't looking at the, at the details as much. Uh, all right, I like her. You can even do things like you can right click, you can um, you can duplicate the shadow if you want to, to make it a little bit bigger, harder if you don't want to, and then um, go back and maybe delete out more. You know, you could play with that shadow. Now her color toning is a little bit off, I think for this image. So I'm gonna show you a couple things that you can do to sort of make her color a little bit better. Um, put her shadows there. I don't know if the shadow's a little too much now. I think it might be. I'm just going to go to that top layer. I'm going to bring the opacity down on the shadow a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. All right. So the color is a little off. So I'm going to go above. I'm going to click the baby layer. I'm going to go to a layer, adjustment layer, and I'm going to go to color balance. I'm going to click this little button that says use previous layer to create clipping mask. I only want to change the color balance on her. So press OK. And now this color balance is clipped to the baby. Now, let me just show you what happens just for effect, okay? If I go to magenta and I pull her all the way up, see it's only the baby that's being affected. But wait, what if I release the clip mask? I'm gonna release it. Now, the whole image, it has affected the entire, everything from that is under this color balance layer is now affected, but I didn't want that. 
I want to only affect the baby. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to clip it to just the baby. Of course, that's a lot of magenta. We don't want that. So what I think I want to do is just play a little bit with the tones. I want to match her a little bit so she looks like she's in the scene. Um, just play. Just That's what I, I say. Just look at the color. You go to mid-tones. You could go to the shadows. See what works for you. Um, I think there's a lot of red in her face. Uh, and then you can just kind of go back and forth, see what you like. Yeah, I think that looks much better. She fits in the scene a little bit better. Um, you can also do the same thing within a layer adjustment layer for, uh, let's say, um, any of these really. You just keep playing. I'm going to do like a hue saturation. I'm going to use a clipping mask again. And that way it continues to clip. And I'm just going to go into. Um, my red layer, just pull the saturation down slightly, just a little bit. Okay. I like her. You can keep tweaking. You can do a little more. And then of course I had turned off. I provided a snow layer. I turned it off. You could turn it back on. You can, with the snow layer, you could change the opacity of it. You could put a mask on it and brush off a little bit of what you don't want. And it, her face covered as much. And that's really it. And that's pretty much the whole shebang. That's the whole thing. And that's how I would do it for almost any of these images. Um, and then when you're done, you can go to file. I usually go to, uh, if you want to export it as a JPEG, um, I would go to export, uh, export as and then I would do it whatever settings you feel. Excellent, fair, good, you know, um, and you set it and uh, you export it. And I usually click convert to sRGB, but usually is RGB and that's good for, um, definitely good for uh, when you view something on a computer, you want sRGB. Um, but of course you could always change your color, print, color settings. Um, so that's it. And I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and thank you so much for watching. And you can purchase any of these templates that I showed you here at photo box designs. And, um, you can also come get a freebie from us. We are usually giving away this three box box photo freebie if you come sign up for our newsletter, which will of course keep you in touch with us and let you know when we have sales, private sales that might not be advertised on our website or on Etsy. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much for stopping by. We appreciate you. Have a great day.